What's up, y'all? Did you miss me? Anyway, I was gone for a week at rodeo school, interestingly enough, and I missed two episodes last week, and then I was supposed to be back on Monday, but I'm going to be honest, life kind of got away from me, and I do not regret it one bit. It has been kind of nice being away from social media just for a hot minute. I was at rodeo school in the middle of nowhere, like over by Arkansas, and we have zero cell reception, no service whatsoever. You just unplug, focus on your horses. It was amazing, besides the fact that we were absolutely dying of heat stroke. It was terrible, although it was better than last year when we had no power for half the week at least this year we had ac but anyway i digress let's get straight into kind of what was going on in the past 10 days since i have been gone now granted i have been paying attention a little bit to what is going on in the world joe biden and donald trump will be supposedly debating tonight it's going to be an absolute train wreck i'm sure they're going to swap grandpa joe out for his um more attractive body alien looking double thing I'm just being honest here. Trump is probably going to say something completely out of pocket that will most likely be true and a reality check, but he's not going to say it in the kindest of ways. And it's going to be a internet TikTok clip that everyone's going to cut and use. And so, you know what? I decided today, I don't really feel like talking about that. I want to talk about something a little bit more lighthearted today. So, you know what I realized like in the past two weeks? The Olympics are this year. Like, did anyone else realize that? Because quite frankly, I didn't care. I don't know. I have no interest in it. I think the NFR is a million times better and more patriotic anyway. That's just my opinion on it. So all of the qualifiers are happening right now. And actually, the other day I was at a pool party and I did for a little while get to watch the women's gymnastics qualifying events for America. And honestly, it was really cool to see some of those girls. They're all absolute muscle mommies. And like, I cannot fathom being able to do what half of those women are able to. Simone Biles was amazing. But there were a lot of really talented girls there. But the American and world swimming, I guess... I'm not even going to pretend like I know a thing about it because there's like the 100 meter and there's like the butterfly and like a backstroke. I'm not a swimmer. I'm just a mermaid occasionally for birthday parties. So that just happened the other day. And a little audio interview news clip came out from this Australian swimmer. Let me bring this up for a second. Um, Australian swimmer named Kate, Kate Campbell. I believe is what Kate Camp Camp Bell, excuse me, Camp Bell. And it was essentially of her saying, you know, like swimming is great and all. But when you see those Americans come out and they got their cowbells and they just chant USA, USA. It's just so freaking annoying. Exactly what she said is this. And I quote, Australia coming out on top is one thing, but it is just so much sweeter beating America. There were a couple nights, particularly the first night of competition, where we did not have to hear the Star Spangled Banner re ring out through the state stadium, and I cannot tell you how happy that made me. If I never hear that song again, it will be too soon. So that's only half of what she said. This is her right here in the pool. She ended up just kind of honestly running her mouth about how much she despises the fact that when an American swimmer walks out, it doesn't matter who they are, the entire American section in the stands and all of their teammates just start chanting, USA, USA, USA. And granted, you know what? This is her opinion. It's totally fine. I am not making fun of anyone or poking anything. But I am just saying in this interview alone from this random Australian female swimmer, she somehow managed to unite at least part of the Democrats and Republicans in this country because I have never seen us rally around each other so fast than to start teasing Australia about how much they suck. Now, I did maybe uh, make a video and post it to TikTok about how um, literally America, we are the best at swimming because most of the people who are here had to run, jump and or swim to get here. So we're going to put her up against a man named like Jose Garcia and he's going to like whoop her ass and then he's going to be up on the podium with the gold and he's not going to speak a lick of English, but he's going to be so damn proud to be an American. And I, I did post that on TikTok. I have absolutely no shame about that, but I just I just find it so ironic that we are uniting 
around this because quite frankly with the 4th of July just right around the corner there is nothing more patriotic than us as Americans rallying around disdain for other countries through American patriotism and superiority I mean what's better than that I'm not gonna lie and what I found even more interesting is that Michael Phelps had something to say about it and quote I would make them eat every word now Michael Phelps isn't really swimming recently I mean he's kind of in retirement it would seem to me just from an outside perspective in this don't come for me if you are like a diehard swimming fan (laughs) I mean, I feel like it's become a little bit more prevalent recently just with like the um, Aaliyah Thomas stuff going on and all that. But quite frankly, I don't really care. It's it's the world that we live in, men and women's sports and women can't go in men's sports because we would just get annihilated unless it was a battle of the wits, in which case we kind of have the upper advantage. But in this Michael Phelps had a lot to say, and you can check out this article. This is from People Magazine. No, this is not sponsored, and no, I don't wish to be by them. (sighs) Here's another quote from Campbell, though. This is what I was originally talking about earlier, where she is talking about how they're ringing cowbells and chanting USA, USA. And then she said, I've never wanted to punch someone more. Phelps did not appreciate that comment. He um, was in an interview recently where he was like, oh, you're going to get your ass kicked. Karma's a bitch. Excuse me. I'm so sorry for saying that, but like, it's kind of true. There's nothing that riles up Americans more than you saying that we collectively are bad at a sport. Now, a hundred percent of the time, yes, if you say something about like the American medical system or the American justice system, basically everyone's going to say, yeah, it's pretty shitty. But when it comes to sports, we're pretty dang competitive. I mean, we did just recently whoop the entire world's butt at cricket. Cricket. That's an English little Otean crumpets. Oh, hell, the Queen of England. Oh, actually, no, she, she's dead. R.A.P. the Queen. Uh, oh, okay, hell, the King of England. Pinky's up to ya, mate. Yeah, uh, we just beat them and the entire world at cricket with a team of part-time cricket players. Now, usually when, you know, you are paid to go compete at this like world stage level and all these crazy sports you dedicate like your entire life to it right because like you're representing your entire country but no all of our cricket players were just like doing it for shits and giggles and they all had like real jobs and real families and like real lives and they just want to do this for fun i've never heard of anything more american in my life a bunch of just american joe schmoes and redneck billies you know just playing cricket and then beating the entire world because we could nothing more American. But going back to um, Kate Campbell, what I found more interesting, here's another um, Michael Phelps reaction, but Miss Kate Campbell um, failed to make it to the 2024 Olympics. And that I think is just the cherry on top, the piece of resistance. Um, In her qualifying match, she ended up placing, I believe it was seventh. Is it seventh? Is it seventh? Yes. Um, Days after this 2023 video went viral, the Aussie swimmer failed to qualify for the Games, finishing 7th to place in the 50-meter freestyle at the 2024 Australian Swimming Trials on Saturday, June 15th. So, Kate, you're talking trash about America and about American swimmers, but you didn't even make it yourself. I kind of find that more ironic than anything. Anyway, that is my lighthearted American patriotism for the 4th of July. Next week, I'm thinking of doing an entire episode of just things that make America, America. It'll probably get taken down on YouTube for like violence and too much patriotism because I mean, let's be honest, we celebrate our breakup with England with fireworks and exploding things with like Tannerite and alcohol and moonshine. So like, USA, USA. Anyway, moving on in the world news. This is something that I actually haven't seen on any social medias. The only reason I even discovered it, you should say, is because my mother sent it to me at like midnight last night and was like, do you know what this is? Am I just missing something? Is this like going viral with you and your generation? And I was like, no, mother, no, this is not going viral. So this is the future of prisons and the system of justice in America today for convicted prisoners. And that is AI futuristic headgear 
that would supposedly put the prisoners in a coma to slow down or to accelerate time in their brain depending on their sentence. Yes, you heard me right. This totally doesn't sound like the plot of every single horror dystopian futuristic film I have ever heard of. Literally ever. I'm pretty sure Divergent did something about this, but let's just get right into this. <clears throat> So everyone knows that in the future we will have flying cards and hoverboards and, you know, giant, you know, CGI graphic sharks that like pop out of buildings, or at least that's what Back to the Future said. I still don't have a hoverboard and um, the graphics are honestly kind of terrible in the movie world today. So Back to the Future 2, you lied. But that is not the point. So they are talking about this an individual's own experience and i'm so sorry i'm going to mispronounce this dyslexia is real uh the yemenini molecular biologist and science communicator hashim al gandhi now this could be a really bad racial joke but i feel like it's kind of ironic that it came from like the middle east and over there i don't know it does is that ironic to anyone else or am i just imagining it i don't freaking know is if Hollywood and the elites are involved, everything just seems a little bit too. Anyway, so people were basically asking this dude, like, how is this possible? What I, I'm 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 a little lost here, like in my reaction, because same, this seems a little bit far fetched. But we're honestly not it's not that far fetched. If you really think about it, we do have a lot of technology today that even just like 50 years ago would be kind of like But anyway. Um, in response, Al Gahanli, Gahanli said, absolutely, the science behind it already exists, but the ethical boundaries stand in the way of making it a reality. Shocker, because, you know, messing with the human cognitive functions and like trying to play God are just a total like gray area when it comes to the scientific community. I feel like when I was um, reading more about this and actually watching the video which is what i wanted to show you guys but i'm so sorry i haven't got the audio on this stupid computer fixed when it, they were talking about it, it it very much felt like something that i would have heard from nazi propaganda in circle like 1940s from like one of their films when it came to their reasoning behind why they did the scientific experiments that they were committing to Jews and gypsies and gays um, in the 1940s to even as far ahead as like the 1950s, which most people are like, well, that didn't happen. No, it did. You're just in denial for some odd reason. You know, that is one thing I never completely understand about like the world today is the fact that everyone seems to be in denial that the Holocaust happened. I thought it was a joke at first when I started, you know, actually being on the internet and being present there, but it's not a joke. There are actually Holocaust deniers out there in the world. Mm -hmm. Anyway, let's continue on. Quote, the limitations of the current criminal justice system and the crucial role vivid memories play in shaping behavior. Injustices are a prominent part of prisons around the world. Prisons often fail at effective behavioral rehabilitation as evidenced by, you know, the high reincarceration rate, you know kind of obvious now me personally my suggestion on how we would you know alleviate this kind of fix remedy this situation is the straight up penalty for like a lot of offenses um the first one off the top of my head um would be some grapes you know the fruit if you if you love grapes that much I, I think maybe you should go meet Jesus. I He will welcome you with arms. They might not necessarily be open, but they're definitely going to send you somewhere. Um, another offense that I think could probably um, maybe just take you up to like a tall building and give you flying lessons uh, would be that if you're a, a P3DO. Just a thought, you know, if you think that that is a normal mexual function uh then that i would love to give you flight lessons let evolution take its course on you i'm sure gravity will not intervene with you at all 
And that that's honestly my thought on that. But for a lot of these smaller offenses, I don't know how I exactly feel about putting people in mental cognitive prisons for petty crimes. You know, I think if we actually tried to fix society and the nuclear family and morality in this country, we might not have to resort to digital like mental prisons because we're running out of so much room. Now, when you're in these um cognitive mental prisons, you're not technically conscious and they basically strap you in um honestly what looks like the pods from the movie Passengers uh with Chris Pratt and um the chick from The Hunger Games. You know, it's those clear glass pods, you're hooked up, you're hooked in, you got your vitals, you get fed through a tube, which seems extremely cheap compared to the way that prison systems run in America today. And I only know all of this um, because for my criminal justice final last semester, I had to come up with a PowerPoint presentation with graphs and data um, about my full prison system plan. We had to design a prison. We had to pay for the prison. We had to make layouts, blueprints for the prison, rules, salaries, how much we could take in the prison, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So... I'm familiar with a lot of the numbers that go in to prison systems. Let's just say that the annual salary for most above average income people is what it costs like almost quarterly to keep someone in prison. Don't I don't ask me why it's so expensive. I quite frankly don't know. If I was them, I'd be like, "All right, um any of you who um commit higher level felonies and crimes you guys can get fed the uh crust of bread glass of hard water not filtered not from the tap you get the hard water even hose honestly um and for those of you who are in here for like petty theft possession smaller crimes like cool you guys can uh pick your meal from like the dollar menu at McDonald's. That's what I would do. I don't know why they get better healthcare and better food and better everything than average citizens. This is totally not where I wanted to go into this today, but this is just where my mind is kind of wandering right now. How come in the prison system we incarcerate these people, these men and women? Um a lot of times for crimes that are smaller, but I'm more referring to like the harsher crimes right now. So let's just look at the felonies. The classes above just, you know, the misdemeanors so we stick them in a prison that has ac that has electricity uh we feed them three square meals a day they get all the health care that they need they usually have access to amenities like libraries gyms rec rooms um some of them are honestly really bougie they look like full-on apartment systems like i would go live there and then we release them and mind you, they were in prison and that didn't cost them a dime. So they basically are just about as incognitant as a child because everything for their life is supplied for them. And then we stick them back out in the world and we expect these violent offenders to not want to go back to prison where everything was paid for them. I have literally talked to people before who have been in prison and they were like, yeah, it was honestly, it wasn't really that bad. I understand why people commit smaller crimes to get sent there because it's it's a meal it's guaranteed they can't starve you because that would be against human rights that would be a human rights violation just a thought quite frankly i think all these violent offenders we should send them out to like an epsom salt quarry does epsom salt come from a quarry i thought it came from salt rocks send them out to i don't know a granite quarry let them go harvest that in the hot sun for like hours a day. Crust of bread, glass of water. You sleep in a tent. Um, you can sleep on a military grade bed, which is usually either a sleeping bag or maybe like a cot if you're lucky. Um, and then let them come back out. A lot of this article talks about the um, rehabilitation and how it's lacking and about how this would um, just be so much better for society. No. Do you guys remember in Rambo? I think it was Rambo 2. I'm pretty sure it was Rambo 2. I don't remember what it's called. It's not Last Blood. Whichever one the second one is. He got sent to literally a granite quarry to go work. 
guess what? I can bet you a million bucks that all those other dudes there that got let out eventually, hopefully, maybe, when their sentences ended, they didn't want to commit those crimes again because they had to do physical manual labor instead of just getting to sit in a cushiony AC jail cell with libraries and gyms and rec rooms and basketball courts and you know, honestly, some of these prisons are pretty bougie, too. Like, they have animal adoption programs, which for the less violent offenders, I think is actually quite lovely. I'm going to do a video. That's what we're doing Monday. We're going to do a video on two different prison systems that I know of. One prison system is up where the BLM is, not Black Lives Matter, but the Bureau of Land Management, where they put on an annual prison inmate rodeo where the contestants are actual prison inmates and they compete in things like saddle bronc, bareback, bull riding um, for money. And they get to work at the rodeo grounds to get money that they can either, you know, send to their families or they can put in their checking account. I want to talk about that prison system. And then the next prison that I want to talk about um, is one that I believe I remember correctly from my final is in South Carolina, where they partnered up with an animal shelter. Um, a an animal shelter that was actually a kill shelter and the prison inmates took a lot of the, the violent dogs the dogs that were going to be euthanized and they were each inmate was in charge of a dog and they were supposed to retrain the dog with hopes of getting the dog adopted on the outside beautiful ways that i think we can help our prison system other than this i don't know y'all tell me what you think about it down below I'm not going to go into this anymore. If you guys want to check it out, it is on Wired. It's also kind of viral on Twitter right now. So go check it out. It's the alternative prison system. Tell me what you guys think of it down below. And if you could do one thing to change the justice system, what would you do? And how would you realistically execute that? Anyway, that's my question for the day. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have an arena to go run. So I got to go to church. But until next time.